So I'm also a big fan of your book. Oh, okay. Uh, you've written a book. Uh, it's Applied Predictive Modeling. Is yes, with Kel Johnson. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and, I, and I work in the book industry. Could you do me uh, a favor and talk to me a little bit about you know how you decided to come about writing this really fantastic work, which is clearly a labor of love. So yeah, that's funny. Um, we. So Kel Johnson and I, Kel used to be he has his own consulting company now, Arbor Analytics. And um, we used to teach um, a course on modeling for, uh, we did it for the American Chemical Society one time. I've done it a couple different places. And I think uh, Kel did it one time for the American Chemical Society and a guy named Adrian Shell came up and said, hey, have you ever thought about writing a book? He was with Elsevier. And so that sort of planted the seed. We talked, to, we, we wrote a proposal, we thought a lot about what we wanted to do. And, you know, there's a lot of machine learning books out there, and one of the things that um, we thought was missing was there was something between the Hasty Tips Ronnie Friedman book, which is, it's not overly theoretical, but it's a very good theoretical foundation. It doesn't really tell you, like, how to do things or when maybe you would do one thing and, and not another. Yeah. And so, um, so we love that book, uh, but, you know, as a practitioner, you know, I, it, it takes a while to figure out, well, geez, when's a good idea to do this or that? The other spectrum, end of the spectrum, is really software books, yeah. which are great, but again, there's no intuition about what you should do or what you shouldn't do. And so that was the goal of the book, is we wanted to write something in between. And, you know, uh, you know books don't make a tremendous amount of money, so if yeah. you, you're going to write one, you should do it for something other than money. So we wanted to write one that was really the kind of book where maybe 15 years ago we could pick it up and say, wow, that's all the stuff I kind of want to know. And that was our goal. We used a lot of um, data sets in there that weren't the standard data sets just to give a new look at things. And, and there were probably more realistic types of uh, problems people would encounter. So everything we did, every choice we made was built on, number one, being able, having people being able to reproduce what we do and, and even extend. There's probably a lot of situations in the book where people can do better than we did um, just by trying other things. Uh, so we wanted people to be able to do that, but we also wanted to teach them, you know, um, without being too pedantic, saying, you know, you should do this then, you know, here, um, you know, just giving some advice on here's some situations where, um, you know, some things would work. And, and there's not a lot of that in the literature. So one of the things we did was we took a data set that we had analyzed a great deal in the book and just added random features to it. Mm -hmm. And for a bunch of different models, seeing what their tolerance was for having you know, noise. Yeah. And that was one thing that, you know, we started thinking about, like, how do we demonstrate the importance of feature selection? And thought, well, geez, you know, we've never sat down and characterized for all these different models, you know, which ones are very susceptible to that, which ones aren't. So it's that sort of thing where, you know, we were approaching it really, again, from a practitioner's standpoint, not only in what we wrote, but what we would like to read kind of thing. It's funny that you mentioned the word practitioner, because I, one of the things I feel that is great about your book is that it really does strike a balance between being like learn carrot in 21 days yeah, yeah and it does have some level of theoretical foundation it does expect you to think it's not a copy paste cargo cult book yeah it really does a fantastic job of that